exactly fitting. You know, we've got to see this grueling style of game play out of them for three and a half hours now. They can deliver more of that in spades on this T half. Yeah, that's a, a brutal behold. Players on either side getting tagged up, goosh through the wood. And so VP will hold on on their B offensive. You'll notice they only have one smoke, one flash as well. Limitations here for VP in terms of getting into the bomb site. But with the best teams in the world, we've got to have the best observer as well. Rushes here, commanding, guiding, pressing every number from one through nine. Clave, he spots that B play. He gives it up. As said, with only one set of util, you don't want to really be running fakes with this, but that might be the plan here after all. We've got two in apartments for VP. The util still back down ramp. Apps getting cleared. Got to worry about Dupree tucked in, in on the corner with Bubsky baiting for him. VP are going to walk right into this. Yeah, this little uh, apartment's crossfire between Bubsky and Dupree. It could be devastating, especially with the CZ up in your face. Bubsky to draw the attention in, and Dupree was Ooh. meant to get that kill, but instead, it's all come unraveled. Clave misses this timing up through mid, and the round could fall apart now. One man in the sight is Zip, the only man left standing for Astralis. They're coming his way, and Jame cuts him down out of the round. It's a dominant piss to begin Inferno for VP. Yeah, you would have would have really loved that app setup to actually yield some tangible results there for Astralis. Instead, VP just blow their way into that A site. And yeah, you know, again, it's VP, it's Inferno. We, we This is a map full of fakery, full of trickery, Harry. And VP are going to be at the helm with that on this T side, right? Taking B early, going back to A, leaving lurkers to keep map control. These are all things that we're expecting to see from VP on the T side of this map. So Astral has got to be careful with how and when and who they rotate. Right now to force up, they want to flip it on its head early. Scout for Bubsky, Deegs elsewhere. And VP close in mid. Oh, nice opener from this scout. Okay, this could still get interesting, especially with a player concealed behind the car. A flash, if it goes over the top, is going to blind kick her. And he's fully open at this peak. Magisk could have a freebie. There's damage at least. And you know you forced VP away from the B bomb site now. That's information as well. More damage coming out from this scout in the pit. Bomb's been retrieved by Kicker and is making its way up through middle. Vertis Pro don't really have any options open to them here apart from committing into this A bomb site. They gave up that banana control. They let Astralis have their run on this side of the map. And so they might just look to move in out through the long side. Easy does it. Very, very quiet on the approach. That smoke goes down now to conceal the movements of these long players. VP start to show their head on short. Yeah, Bubsy has been mollied out as well. He's not got a lot of room to move. Zip, same case on the site. Not going to get a kill. Dupree's hiding in the ward, in the pit rather. They jump over him and Dupree doubles up, grabbing an AK. This is a force by round that Astralis are now controlling and they are stealing it right from Virtus Pro. Magisk with a double deed and you can hear him getting loud. It means everything. Astralis not letting VP start strong. Uh, uh, unreal, unreal round out of Magisk and Dupree especially, right? I think it's important that Dupree finds so much in the pit. If you remember back on Dust 2, he was having a very rough yeah. time. It looked like he was getting in his own head a Definitely. bit. And so now you get onto Inferno, you can turn a new page if you're Dupree, and there you were instrumental to winning that four spy round with your double D kill in pit. Okay, if we can get Dupree activated, if we can get everyone showing up for Astralis, I know we're on for another belter here, Hugo. Absolutely, because we look at players like, you know, someone like Zip, for example, on that last map, he was just destroying, man. He got 40 kills, but the end of thing, no one else even hit 30. Bubsky was close. And yeah, Dupree was bottom of the server. Now we have guns out, but not for VP. It's Astralis using their opponent's weapons against them. A full Glocks. Rare to see a T concede force by wars this early, right? We often see if you know a team in VP's position to just buy up and you know keep sailing down the river, keep fighting back and forth with force buys. A VP go fine. You want it, you can have it. We know how many AKs you've got. You've got three of our rifles at least, and then two more. So VP, I actually really like this call. It's a rare sight, but giving Astralis two and then coming in with guns of your own. 
least stops all the delay in getting to those rifle rounds. Yeah, and this is like, you know, this is one of these uh, little Glock almost tack pauses where you have a bit of time to just talk about how you're going to approach the rifle round in the next. Also, the more time you take, the more utility Astralis waste in holding these angles that we're never even getting pressured. And so now you've had your chat, you've had a bit of time, you're just going to commit everyone in through the apartments. Nade on Magis does do a lot of damage, and he might be on for a bit of a killing spree down here in the pit. This is the chance that the frag movie clip for Magis in with three. Molly burns out the remaining two. And so Astralis get the conversion. Full Glock round, you were never that worried. Now the big guns come through for Virtus Pro. Yeah, I, I really like that. The sooner the better for VP, right? That just shows you have faith in your gun rounds, in your in your game plan on this T side, and you certainly need to up against a team like Astralis. So AKs are out here for Virtus Pro. And we have a pretty even early buy. It's rare to see, you know, four guns on both teams at round four. With how the money is and all. But here we go. VP moving up banana. Establishing their default. Astralis are beating them there, though, and it's not gone well for Bubski. Luckily, the trade is still here. Those mollies push kick it forward. He couldn't go back. He couldn't stand still. That was his only option. Oh, where that came from. Buster's hunting the trades. There are two CTs here, and they wait for him to run low on ammo. Back to the pistol now. This is a mess. They're going to try and hunt him with that deep smoke, but Glaive doesn't want to go wide and be on the chopping block. He knows, and he gets it, even converting the spray onto your kinder as well. Yeah, that is dirt. Our Glaive play like, getting away with the double there. All right, he knows he's done more than enough in landing that spray transfer. And this first rifle round for VP, remember, they bit the bullet. They took an eco to field rifles right away. Well, they're not showing us why at all. They've been blowing out the water in this rifle v rifle round. And it's a little while till you can really look to stem the bleeding if you lose this one. Another eco will be looming for Virtus Pro. At the very, very least, they need damage. Yeah. And if you want to look for silver linings, it's that Astralis is still split 2-2. Two, two. So as VP ease into this B bomb site, they've got an even odds fight to try and get this bomb down. Yeah, there's always hope. There's always a bit of hope, but let's see if it was worth having. Jame with a molly to the back of B is going to push out a player, but he turns and Glaive has done a lot of damage. Can it get finished off by Zip on the boost? Dodging flashes and Jame wanted to check it, but he wasn't convinced. Sanji now alone swaps off the gun and gets re-peaked by Majisk. It doesn't get worse than that. Punishing for Astralis. Three to one. Poor Jame as well. After he kills Glaive, he never goes back to check boost. That was what he was doing in the first place. And so that 2v2 that did ensue does not favor VP. And back to the drawing ball with it. It's a really good position for Astralis though, right? Like as as we've said. And as has been clear across this entire series, leads do mean nothing. Being up five, ten rounds doesn't make you a winner yet. But getting on the board early, getting those rounds in and starting to feel the map out, Astralis are definitely in full control right now. I like this. They throw deep nades down banana and then they swap their, their players back to B. Now we have even more utility on this bomb site. BP aren't going to be expecting it. Yeah, this is great, man. Like, you know, you, if you're your kinder here waiting with three points of health, oh, yeah. you've gone, well, they've just thrown all their utility. Oh, no, there it is. There's the real utility on those players that rotate in late. It deals with your kinder. And so any chance of finding something on this pistol round now should really be out the window for VP. Going a man down early on is stressful. It's freed up a player on Astralis to play that rotation role and go and help out at this B-bomb site. The only little window that I'm noticing right now, and I'm sure everyone is watching at home, is Sanji trying to strike a deal with the timing gods okay. on this CT wrap. And there he is, Doming Dupree. Now these players at B are faced with a bit of a question, a bit of an ultimatum. Do they tuck in and wait for a B play split through CT and Banana, or do they try to pressure this Banana area? Right now, they're still holding on to top B. Here comes the push from Bird pro glaive needs to hold his own and zip will swing out to try and help but it's not gone well this ct wrap has delivered when it matters most for vp and it's given them a chance at a 2v2 with a bomb plant well played to vp to just waste the time of astralis there so long for sanji now astralis are waiting no time themselves they're running right in they're hunting these 2v1s and trying to find jame at the back of the bomb site he is alone 
His teammate locked out by the smoke. Can they find him? They're chasing back new box. They will check it. Jane gets the shot though. And through the smoke goes Sanji. Jane wins both fights and saves VP on an eco win. My goodness, that should never have been VP's round. That was Astralis' chance to start running away, Harry. VP with pistols, tech nines, deagles, P250s, you name it, they've got it. And it's doing the work. Even though they run through that B smoke, they still don't peek at the car for long enough for Sanji to get activated. And then James somehow does this. That's got to get you hyped. Yeah, now you're feeling it. Winning Ecos and breaking the money early. Stralis have a full buy, but they have nothing left in their pocket. Yeah, what was once looking like a chance for Astralis to build up money and look to steamroll in the opening segments of the first half has now been bought down to the wire once more. That smoke has well and truly uh, missed the mark. Oh. Not the end of the world. You've still got four in play, so you know, it just means you can't really sell this B fake just yet. No re-aggression. That's what Vertus Pro were worried about. That's why they've been kind of... Uh, you know, very respectful over top banana and how they're taking this. They're scared of those pop flashes and they're scared of Astralis trying to retake this control. Well, now that shouldn't be so much of a problem. With utility going into A, that third man at B has been pulled away. That's Bobski on rotation. And so the B site is left in the original two players' hands, Glaive and Zip. This is where VP try to go back and try to move in towards banana. After forcing Astralis out early, I was worried about re-aggro now. They know they might have tempted that third player away, and so this is where they're going to look to hit the go button on a B execute. Yeah, that smoke's pretty fresh, though, and VP might have to go through it because there's another one down at the 24-second mark. VP, oh, the spam might get a kill, and that will entice them. Glaive gets out with 10 health remaining. They've done good damage to VP anyway in the seconds. first place. They're going, they're running right through. And Zip has dropped the bomb, falling back with a double. Glaive spams the smoke. It's so messy. It's all Astralis's. All they need to do is stop the bomb plant. But Buster provides cover, and he almost gets it down in time. Almost won't cut it. Forget the kills. It's the round for Astralis. Buster needs to live, as he doesn't want to lose his gun and his funds. But that's a shame. He gets the kill and then has to stick the bomb. Like He couldn't have gone for the plant earlier. He would have been a dead man. Maybe a coffin's plant, but Glaive have already wrapped round. Oh. Nice utility saving for Astralis. That's one thing to credit, right? They hold those smokes until the final 20 seconds of the round, and that's what forces VP through it. Yeah, I mean, you know, back when Astralis' utility usage was really making waves, Inferno was at the, uh, at the forefront of that. Oh! I love this out of Bobski. Hold that thought because this guy, you know, we talk about util, we talk about slow rounds. Bobski decides, look, this one's going to be fast, and that's coming off the back of me. Alt mid peak and a double kill lined up. Disastrous start for Virtus Pro. They've been used to being showing a lot of respect across the map so far. They weren't ready for that peak out of the bedroom. Yeah, these aren't plays that you should be going for every round, but these are things that Astralis can sprinkle in on top. You know, every two or three gun rounds, start pushing, start taking banana, push down middle, make an ult fight, get your AWP in the action. I love the call to do so. Now they just got to close it. And oh, Zip's hunting. Two kills, dropping off of the boxes. Only Sanji, and they are coming to him. No com comfort, no safety in this site. And five alive for Astralis. Now they're starting to warm in. They may have lost to that eco, but otherwise it's been pretty damn clean for Astralis. The only rounds VP win are with Glocks. Yeah, just then I just got like uh, life before he joined this team. Well, finally, now he's here with a core that have, you know, run wild over every region in the world and lifted trophies there as well. So this is so great to see Bobski being set up by this team and succeeding while he does it. Takes a peek in middle, he bails out early and VP are coming to meet him there. Dupree with that orb, strikes Sanji off the tally, incendiaries his escape as well. They are running him down, so Dupree is going to get tested here. Ooh, they're up in his face, nice. he takes one to the grave with him. James Orb struck away, and the round is cleaned up by Astralis. Nice double out of Dupree, when yep. it really did matter. If he didn't get away with that, you know, and James given a bit more room with that scavenged orb, could have been a very different round.
Yeah, I think putting Dupree back on the orb is a really nice call as well, right? Like, he so, did, we were talking about the f- trouble he was having on dust. He was having problems. Like, don't get me wrong. Everyone has had that around today with the orb. Like, yeah. Zip has even had around with the orb. Glaze has been running it most of the time. But when I think of, like, second orb in this team, I think of Dupree. I think of, you know, Device and Dupree. And, you know, it's so great to see him back with his weapon. Now, a little less pressure. I think it's a nice way to try and reinvigorate him a bit as well, yeah. right? Because because the rifle just wasn't hitting back on dust too. And so now you've given him a different gun different chance to show out what he's got and he is delivering results with it yeah. and i love how mobile the ct side is as well at the same time right? again we had that swap of u2 in this round two players go b they throw their grenades and then they double back and trade positions more utility however that's a problem because vp are not interested in b so that u2 will now be relegated to retaking if we get there dupree's rerouted on long He's, mi- he's beat the timing, rather. Yekinda hasn't crossed yet, and he's trying to bait the orb shot out. He gets the info, but Dupree gets the kill. And now, VP, this is a bit awkward. It's drawn to a halt, but they still want to commit with their control. Yeah, they don't really have any options again. You know, they, they, they kind of all in the idea of this A play. And even though the results haven't been great initially, they don't have anything else left in the tank. You don't know what's happening at Banana. For all you know, Astralis could be in mid. And so this A play has got to work. You don't have other options. There's the opener from Jane. Bobski still in oh. the sight, tries to hold on. And he's not going down quietly. However, Kicker and Buster are given a chance. They're given these kills and it's left on to Glade in the 1v2 in the blink of an eye. How did they muscle their way back into this one? It was going so well until it wasn't. Now Glaive can't see Buster on top of the balcony and it's going to be a cleanup for VP 2v4, I feel like. For that one. It was so fast. Like, unreal, it was yeah. so instant. All the kill feed kills are yeah. coming up blue. The nade is beautiful from Dupree and Library. And then suddenly it starts to get awkward. VP, uh, we know we never count them out in any score. But again, in any round, individuals shining through and winning an important rifle round there on the T side. And now they've got the money to show for it. James Orp taking on Dupree. Dupree is over at A, so we're not going to get to see that head-to-head immediately, especially not with Virtus Pro challenging for oh. Banana. Buster taps Glaive out. One bullet fires over the head of these players up at the front, leading the charge. And it has rolled out the red carpet in this B site. Zipnix, it is all you. And Kicker rids us of the solo B hold. It's just Virtus Pro in this round. Bomb plant found and a save called in for Astralis. There is nothing they can do here. Oh, that's brutal. And that is a great example of a change of pace out of VP. Yeah. Something that we didn't really see out of their T sides back on, you know, dust regulation or an overpass was this, you know, uh, one of the comments we made, Astralis were very, very keen on taking some early fights. They never really had to worry about Virtus Pro exploding onto the scene after getting that first kill. Well, that round there, you know, VP are no slouches. They know that getting a B opener in that fashion, that is the equivalent of being welcomed into the site. Yeah. For sure, I, especially with the fact that we're, you know, a lot of teams will like triple and sometimes even quad B at the start and throw the util and then, you know, the Nate players will leave. Astralis haven't been doing that. That You know, they've just been going two, three, throwing the nades and then swapping if there's no rush, if it's quiet in the mid round. And so, you know, for that reason alone, VP uh, have no problem with taking B fast. They haven't seen triple nades down banana. They haven't seen, you know, a, a four man stack in that site early. And so, yeah, they're fine taking on what is essentially a five on two here was buster's kill yoinked from kicker and uh, a very nice couple of entries from those two on vp the guys who won that two on four to close it out again six to four back to banana now we have a triple b for astralis oops here as well VP are being very methodical with their Utah, volleying off everything they can astralis still trying to get value from theirs before they lose position Nades going in deep, but they receive more damage than they give out. Although it's very close. Oh, is this going to be a banana retake? Like the flash is being lined up for Glaive to, to move back in. You feel like he's a little more free as well because of this triple B hold, right? He's got more in the way of support. If you lose anyone trying to go aggro, you can withstand some of these punches, but you didn't want it to go down in that fashion. You wanted Glaive to have a chance with the flash. 
Instead, he's peeked ahead of it. And now, Virtus Pro, they completely leave the B bomb site. They get that kill, and now they move back into A. There is the rotation from Astralis. They're calling for bodies to move around, but Yakindar might remove the orb. Oh, nice from Dupree. Has that just given Astralis a bit more of a fighting chance? Dupree and Bobski are both dead, but Magisk, oh, Magisk, in this position, of all positions, up in the apartments, has even the playing field, a two-on-two. And with Zip still alongside him, still the same ferocious oh. face that he's been all series long, maybe there's a chance. Buster wow. nailed by Zip on the peak, and the clutch is in. Zipnix once again standing tall at the end of that round, puts a seventh on the board for Astralis. He is impeccable right now. This guy's not stopping, and more clutches to add to the cabinet. He even gets that first kill before Majisk activates. Zip spams the smoke on library, and he gets a kill. That draws all the attention away from Majisk. They think the Zip is that third A player, and yeah, Majisk at least gets one kill from this position, sets Zip up for the clutch, and he answers the call. Seven to four. And a lovely little round there out of Zipnex. Splitting hairs as finely as these overtime games. Yeah. You need as much as you can get on exactly. the Astralis side. Reinvestments. They can proper for Virtus Pro. Once again, this banana fight oh. coming in and Zip on the receiving end of that Molotov. Team flashed as well by Dupree, so I don't think he ever even knew he was burning. That is a brutal opener. Oh, it's not often that that's how you lose someone early on, and especially oh. not when it's zip. You're going to try and boost back. This is risky. This is ballsy. With Kicker waiting, if a flash goes over the top of the half wall, these two players are dead. That's super scary right now. Kicker could just hold this. He was a, mo a moment ago. If Glaive jumped up, he should be dead, but Kicker backs up. James got the flash though. That's what's scaring me. Like he's yeah. holding it. Oh. There's the flash bag, and that's what we were worried about. Kicker dismantles the boost. Oh, you could see it building up before your very eyes. And elsewhere, all over the map, the kills are coming in for VP. This is where it gets scary. Look, the bomb's going down in B, but they're already hunting the saving Dupree Orb. Yeah, good luck getting out of here alive. That's one shot from Dupree, but really your stat padding and money saving at this point, the leg is unfortunately too low. And so it's only damage to you. Can the VP take the AWP away? They keep theirs and they start building back into the T side. Can't say it's the first time we've seen it. It might be the last time here. Certainly the last time for one of these two teams. Right now, Astralis on the back foot. They might be up in rounds, but they've got no more money. So VP's chance to really start taking the lead away in this T-side is here. Force for Astralis. Rather not be on the next round by. Instead, it's a double eco. All the better for VP to build into this half, I say. Hell, they could win it out, Harry. I mean, man, when we were in the Astralis era, one of the comments that would often get made is they were so good at getting you to subscribe to their system, right? The utility was punishing, the way they played the game was punishing, uh, and you didn't really have a choice but to be at their mercy. Whereas VP, they, they've kind of taken that sentiment in their stride. When you play this squad, you're into the VP world of madness, right? You're into the five hour best of three reality that we live in. I don't think any other team is as good as directing the flow of a game, and so much of it comes off their own backs and their own ability to grind out these victories. Yeah, VP turn a BO1 into a BO3 and a BO5 into a BO7. So let's see how this last map will go. Boost up for Astralis, but VP, as is tradition, are in no mood to commit. Finally leaving A, and look who's joining. Astralis making, unfortunately, the wrong read, moving their stack back over with this boost on Zip. He's about to confirm everything here on this B site. Yeah, it's going to be brutal, man. Zipnix, what can you even do? They're in, they're running the mark, and now you fired off with the Deagle. They know he's up on the boost. He knows they've spilt into the B site, and he can't do anything about it. The reality of this force by setting in for Astralis that this round is one that will slip past the wayside. 
They get yeah. out with the Deegan armor at least. You got another chance at this four spy in the next round. So, For you sure. know, all things considered, this is this is okay, right? This is a way to make it so you haven't completely thrown away a chance at salvaging a round with these deagles. I mean, at, at this point in the game, Astralis going for the buy in this round was was subscribing to the idea that we're fighting for an 8-7. Like, that's that's really what we're doing. We're forcing, we're hoping to win, but in the likely event we don't, here we go, another eco that at least now isn't an eco with them having these saved deags. But you're giving VP7 at this point, and there's not much you can do about it. So here we go. All the more reason for VP to get loud, to start having a little more faith as well. And Zip, he's having a lights out performance in the server, rivaled only by Kicker, who's also on double digits. But no one on his team holding the same score. Majisk is close, at least. Oh, if we got another one of these gamble stacks, then this time it's going to be the other way. Leaning heavy into a, a B hold early on. You know, Vertis Pro, they, they've kind of had their, their say as to how this B site is played out in these last few rounds. So you're hoping that with four here, you can hold on on the Astralis side. Bubsky's also taking an aggressive stance in the bedroom. He gets info at least. The spot goes either way. Now, what will that make VP do? Right? You've seen someone getting aggressive in the apartments. You might start to get a little bit paranoid as to Astralis extending their map control over here at A, and that could force you into this B stack unknowingly. As they start to creep up, Astralis haven't peaked yet. They haven't shown anything. First Pro are looking at this B site, and they're saying, oh my god, they might have stacked A. This could be free. This might be an empty site. Buster now spots one oh. and a second. That's still only two spotted. A third man now seen over in dark and I think the penny is starting to drop. <gasps> Regardless, kills are coming through for Astralis. And as Vertus Pro turn back into A, Bobski has got to do it all with this Deagle up in the apartments. They know about him now. He doesn't have the element of surprise. Dupree has slipped in from long, but dealt with on that first peak. Bobski is still buying oh, time. Nice. Back it's awkward. Vertus Pro are running again oh. around the world and back to square one. It's a B play after all. But who gets there first? Magisk or VP? He has a molly. Magisk has a molly. It's only 10 seconds. He's going to throw it right in the middle. He can churn them up here. There it is. Almost the ace for Magisk. Bomb trying to get grabbed. He has just enough time. James trying to stick the numbers in. But here comes Zip and he's looking to close it out with ease. Astralis, the eco win, the save Deegs, do it all. And Majisk at the forefront of that. Oh my goodness. They send VP on a railway back and forth, round and around again. <laughs> they hit both sites twice and they finally fall to oh. the pistols. Oh, only VP would attempt that in that situation there, man. They run all the way back. A bomb plan in the final seconds. But yeah, Magis, you, you mentioned him. You mentioned that magic Molotov. Picked up off of VP's body as well. That was, you know, the bottle molly. That was not an incendiary grenade. So VP, they signed their own death note. And that hurts to lose it for sure, losing the pistols. But, you know, both teams have been on either side of that in this series. Just got to pick a, pick yourselves up and carry on. This is the most important gun round now. And Dupree is starting to find his footing. Yeah, more confidence as well. Magisk is peaking in alt mid. He didn't see anything early. Oh, your Kindar is going to say, looking like he wants to get a little bit tricky with this mid smoke. There's a gap. He's seen a leg. Magisk. Oh, keep your eye on the oh. smoke, and he will flick back to deal with your Kinder. The numbers oh. getting stripped away, and it's Magisk at the helm again, offering up a big multi kill to try and see through this last in the first half for Astralis. Yeah, we said there was no rivaling zip just a couple of rounds ago. Well, that changed very quickly. Six kills in two rounds, and we're not done. Majisk is not going to get the action, though. It is a B play. He's trying to run a rotate. And oh, the flash is beautiful. Glaive, nothing he can do there but fire and hope. Zip might be calling for utility of his own. VP have even smoked off CT Sport. It's all on Zip. No one's through just yet, but they finally appear. And Zip shuts down the first, leaving it all on the sniper. Yeah, just Jame and oh. through the smoke. Fans, Astralis have a lead. But those have come to matter a hell of a little in this series so far. 
yeah, OTs have been how we end both maps. And so it would only do it justice to give us the same here. Jamie hears the steps. He just gets in boiler in time and he lets him up long, looking for the backstab. Glaive is gone, but everyone else from Astralis makes it. However, Jamie is solo A right now. He may have all the info. He may have the world in the palm of his hand, but he doesn't have the sight nor his life tagged through the smoke. Magisk was wrapping him anyway, even if Bobski didn't get that kill. And now it's gone from bad to worse here for VP. Bomb planted and app still controlled. And it's a slow retake out of VP. Leaving no stone unturned, but will this, uh, well, this slow approach come back to haunt them? They smoke off this site crossfire. Magisk is in pole position. Oh! No, the turnaround! Oh, is that gonna tear it all away? Zip's dead in the pit, another kill comes through. Bob it's Ski. all on Bobski, 1v1, and he's hiding in the smoke. He's playing with time, oh. and there's the tap that seals the deal. Astralis, they get double digits, and it's on the back of young gun Bobski. He's a bit of a pistol player, isn't he? He had that ace with a Glock over on overpass, but here on Inferno, he just wants to close this series for his team. And that could be the beginning of the end for VP. Never want to count out this roster, but 10 to 6 down, a pistol lost, a force incoming. This is going to give us very, very similar vibes to Overpass, at least in the scoreline before VP start buying. What a round from Bubski. Flash denies any mid information. Yakinda still goes back for it with the FAMAS. James hit with a scout as well. Couple of guns, but Bubski wants to remove them both. Oh, man, this is... Oh, James! Yeah, we'll finally decide that enough is enough. And here comes the Mac-10s out of the apartments. Brap from the boys on the entries. Defuse... Oh, sorry, Plot is in. And no chance at a retake. No chance at a defuse if you're Virtus Pro. You're too far away. You're locked out of a yep. great stuff there from the red arrows of Astralis. <laughs> yeah, coming through the sky. No warning. And is it will diffuse the situation with those double entries. VP was so hung up in middle trying to get those fights off. And now they're just trying to keep guns. Glaive jumping round corners and no survivors here for VP. It's five alive, it's money made, and it's MAC-10s taking the limelight here for the Danish side. 11 to six. And Yakinda has gone stone cold. He's been left on the countertop too long. You mentioned how VP like to exhaust their opponents. Well, maybe some friendly fire here. Three and 13. This is the guy we look out to to be a beast here for VP. If he can't recover, then I don't think VP will. I just can't get over the, the copious amounts of star power we've seen out of Zip in this yeah, series. Absolutely. Like, this is unreal. 40 kills on the last map alone. Like no matter no matter how anyone else is doing, he's been a he's been a constant. He's been a backbone of these score lines, of these games. And in the third map, we're seeing that culminate in all its glory. Zip leading the charge. Virtus Pro, a B stack with pistols. And maybe Astralis are about to walk into it. Yeah, but there's only two here. Even if it goes worst case scenario and both these guys die, it's all the info in the world. They can go back for the bomb. They can kill that solo player of kicker on A. And it's not like Astralis have overcommitted here. I mean, Astralis won this round by stacking B with their own Deagles, if you remember. But VP are not as well armed. Flat USPs with the exception of Kicker. Yeah, I Magis like this, man. Magisk always yeah. feels like it's too good to be true, right? Like, this was exactly the scenario they posed to VP. As you pointed out, they weren't peaking, and that was very, very purposeful, trying to entice them into a stacked site. Now with that kill coming Here in at long, come. the peaks are going to come in towards Magisk and he's able to make the call. Yeah, we read this right. It is the B stack. So now Astralis feel assured in this oh. round and Magisk will make it so. Lovely. A lovely little four piece to cement 12-6. Yeah. Now we got the big boy guns coming in for VP, but you don't have many rifle rounds if you don't hit the ground running. Yeah, they were 12-5 on overpass. They still made it OT. So this by... You know, comparison, easy, mate. But easier said than done when Astralis are looking this ferocious. Ever since I said no one was rivaling Zipex's kill count, but Jisk has come up uh, with some massive rounds uh, in the last few towards the end of the CT side as well. And so here we go. AWP for Jame. Still the bonus for Astralis. It's a good round to run it on. You can definitely win this. It's forced head armor for VP. And if you do lose it, you've got multiple rebuys coming down the pipeline. 
So let's see something faster, something more aggressive, something audacious from Astralis. Yeah, they're wasting no time. Oh, Bobski with the open and the back oh, turns yeah. on the force and churning through the rifles. Oh. There's the lineup for Sanji, king of the SMG players. He reigns them back in, still alive in oh. the site, dealt with by Glaive. And it's him and Majisk to try and see this round through. This was a bonus round from Astralis, and now they're poised to run away with it. Yeah, Glaive's stuck behind the pillar. He gets the reload off. I don't know how he wins that. Yakinda out for the count, and Buster now up on with a choice. 1v2, there's the first. Where's Majis gone to? He's back in the pit, and Buster has no clue. Checking everything but the right place, and time is ticking as well. He doesn't have a kit. He doesn't have a hope in hell. Tap on the bomb, and Majis bites. 13 rounds to Astralis. All the guns saved, all the glory kept, and VP put on the back foot. That, that, this is a disaster now for Virtus Pro, right? The difference maker on all these maps gone by is when they headed into these crunch rifle rounds where winning them really, really matters in terms of setting you up for these comebacks that we associate with VP. They've always been able to get them over the line. Well, here, not only was it a bonus round victory going in favor of Astralis, VP have full forced. This is mental. I really thought Aniko was coming in. Jame is still saving for the orb, but everyone else has put everything they can in. And set up, stacked up on the short side. It's where Astralis have been running, uh, you know, almost every round so far, right? So it's a, it's a good call, but it's a risky call for VP. Could just be left in the dirt. Yeah, th this isn't the normal second half. This isn't one of these ones where we're looking at it and it feels like VP can grind their way back in. Their, their hopes, their dreams in this quarterfinal now hinge on a very, very mishmashed buy. You don't have uh, you don't have much in the way of utility either, right? You've got a decent belt of it, but you've got to be conservative. You've got to use it if and when it's needed. You want to try and hold on to as much as you can. Come this execute from Astralis. Kickert's oh. position was hoping to net in the opener, and it will through the smoke. Dupree on the receiving end of the Famous spray. All right, VP. Maybe still a little bit more left in the tank yet. Yeah, that jump for Dupree, he got the info, but it didn't help him out. Just got spammed. Can Zip get an entry here? Because they're fully committed. They're not going back to B. They've left that position. So into the stack that is now dissipating. It is falling oh apart. There's only two CTs here. James gets cleared. There's the entry from Majisk. You still got to worry about the Aps flank, but Kick has been cut off by Util, some of which his own. Really just buying time for Buster, who's been denied by Majisk back in the pit in a perfect position in a four on three. And Astralis looking ready to close his force by. It won't be made. Uh, they won't make that decision. VP will instead. They give it up. They throw in the white uh, flag and they uh, try and hold on to their guns. Yeah, you know, saving three here, it's all right. It means that you still have guns in the next. As mentioned, Jane was saving in this round, so he's able to purchase up as well. But we really are approaching last chance saloon for Virtus Pro, considering that throughout this entire series, throughout every VP game ever, you're left hanging on under this belief that they can pull it back. That is going to be tested now more so than ever. Yeah, this is uh, this is the Astralis that we wanted here, Harry. This is the Astralis that we almost did see in the first couple of maps, but it's finally coming to fruition and even more potently than before. Five in a row on the T side, yet to give a round up, forcing VP's reinvestment. Think about how it started. It was the opposite on the T side. VP, when they lost the second round after Astralis' fours, VP fully code. They went, fine, you want it, you have it. We'll come back in with our gun rounds. We'll show up when it matters. Well, VP have done the opposite here. They've been rebuying round after round. And again, they put in penny after pound. AWP out for Jame. Fast for Astralis. Oh, and the opener, it's Bob Ski to secure it. I tell you what, this guy might find himself running into the lion's den an awful lot, but he really has crowned himself as the maddest lion out there. Another entry, perhaps more damage onto Buster, who is the last hope at B. They've got him trapped in a cage. Jane cannot cover the cross. Buster dead after one, and James even getting spammed out as well. It's a three on four retake. No more saving for VP, you'd like to think. Apart from this one first, <laughs> let's just give it up, guys. I don't know if we can do it, and they might be right.
even that rotator kicker is you not can, coming in. You can see like the inner yeah. conflict, right? They kind of know that this is around. They have to attempt, but at the same time, it's so unlikely that the best case is to back up, give up 15, give map and series point to Astralis, and hinge on finding nine in a row for overtime. Yeah, this is the constant rebuying that's dug a hole that VP will now rest in. Six feet under. And Astralis showing up in the server, showing up on land. 15 to 6 right now, looking to hunt down some guns, looking to remove what they can at the end of things. They might get the headshot to Jane, but it is denied. And here we go. 15 to 6. Surely, no way in hell we end up in overtime. It's just about slipping it through. Just one round, Harry. Yeah, I mean, you can almost feel like th there's not the big celebrations anymore on Astralis. Yeah. The reason is they're not content with just winning the one round or the two rounds that we needed to get them up onto 15. They want the whole damn thing locked in before they get up and start celebrating. You can feel the whole nation of Denmark, man, waiting with bated breath. Are Astralis back? Is this the team that Denmark can get behind, showing its face once more. Oh. Yakinda, aggression, a change of pace, a change of face. Yes. But Bobski's going to trade it out. A four on four. Buster getting pressured, but he does hold his own. And so for the time being, the B play is denied. Yeah, good damage for Yakinda, right? As I said, he's been having a quiet one, but trying to throw himself back into the action. I like, uh, you know, I admire his confidence to do that even when times are tough. That's uh, such a typical Yakinda play. Nice shot from Jamie, gets out alive. Don't know how. Flash gives him a little more room. Kick is going to be here to deny the bomb plant. A very hard position to check with hit and long open as well. And so Astralis start using utility. They will clear it, but kick is quicker. And now Dupree in the clutch, very low and not long for this world. It's seven rounds to Virtus Pro. They hold on for a moment. But how much longer? Well, look, man, we, we say this a lot. Yakindar is often a backbone of this VP team, often an integral, aggressive piece of the puzzle. Four and 17 when it matters most. We saw him trying to go back to his old tricks with banana regression there. If we could get Yakindar activated, if we could. Maybe Virtus Pro can make this a long one after all, but it is just the sheer length. It's the sheer grit that's going to be required. And Astralis, they're eyeing up a victory, man. They're spurred on. This is the biggest chance they've ever had in this series to close it out. A fast play out through mid, and James off the angle. They're chasing oh, no. him, but he does get away. Yeah, nice shot, but just still gets Sanji out of the library who covers for Jame. He's now back on the angle, only for a moment prior to the flashbang, and Buster down Banana is stopping Astralis from rotating out. Even crossing isn't safe. They have to use a smoke for the choke. They know Buster won't flank with Yorb, and so they'll focus on the other one, trying to hunt down Jame. Easier said than done. He's still here on the long side, and now it's a 2v3. No util, just one smoke. You're just trying to fight your way back in. Glaive started, he's provided the first, and now it's left up to orbs to retake. They might want to juggle some guns. Yeah, double orb retake, far from ideal. Zip and Glaive, two of the most experienced faces you'll look to see left up against the might of Virtus Pro, and they're not giving them anything. VP have got to bring the fight to Astralis, and it's got to be now. Zip holding the short side. The timing is perfect from Glaive. Jame, 1v2, and no Jame time left in the tank. He's got to win this. There's the first. Oh, oh Jame. Jame with the double, and it keeps on going for VP. So close on the defuse, but he's locked it in. <laughs> James is, keeps on going. Virtus Pro, they need seven more, but with Jame showing up in crunch time, maybe it's a possibility. He's kept it going. It feels so bittersweet for VP, right? You just win one hell of a round there from those double orbs from James' dominance, but it doesn't matter, and it might not even be remembered if Astralis just come up and close right here, right now. Lovely shots for Jame, but is it Jame in vain, or is it Astralis closing? Every round we ask that question again. Back up Banana with the pace as well. Great utility for VP. They do bruise and batter Astralis on the approach. It's just gone three health for crying out loud, but Astralis not deterred. They want to commit. Yeah, 
Smoke down in CT. Sanji dead. Oh, Yakinda oh. trying to make a play into the molly. Lots of damage done, but only one kill. Oh, Yakinda, that could have been his defining moment. That could have been it. That could have just snatched another round away. But once more, it falls to the retake. James has been a hero in these times before. When Virtus Pro have needed someone to close the gap, he has been there to answer the call. This time, smoked off in CT. They are not giving James the room. Instead, it's going to come down to this flash peak from the coffins to try deliver these openers. And the re-smokes are in again. So much time is eluding Virtus Pro. They've gotten this first kill, but it is ticking away from them. Jane dead in CT. The trade's back. It's even. Two on two, but time is running out. And that's the least of their worries. Dupree!